Significance levels and critical values help us decide whether or not we should reject our null hypothesis. Recall, we are using the following null and alternative hypothesis. And we had found that Kian's average IQ score of 117 is 13 points below 130, and in terms of a test statistic, it is 2.6 standard errors below 130. We've already noted that we must ask the question, how far must the average drop below 130 before we are willing to reject our null? This is the idea behind a critical value. We must select a false rejection rate. We call this the significance level. 5% is the most commonly used significance level, so let's use that. Assuming the null hypothesis is true, and the standard error of 5, the sampling distribution of the average would look as follows. Using the standard normal distribution as an approximation, roughly 5% of values fall more than 1.65 standard errors below the mean. Converting this back to IQ score, approximately 5% of averages will fall below 121.75. In other words, if his IQ really is 130, approximately 5% of the time, we'd end up with an average IQ score of 121.75 or less by chance, or a test statistic of negative 1.65 or less by chance. We call the IQ of 121.75, or the test statistic value of negative 1.65, the critical values, and the area below them, the rejection region. For values below those, we will reject our null hypothesis. In our example, the sample average is 117 and the test statistic is negative 2.6, and these fall below the critical values into the rejection region, and so we will reject the null hypothesis. If we want to be less likely to falsely reject the null, we would use a smaller value for the significance level, and hence a cutoff that is further from the null. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, like us on Facebook, and visit our website.